Hey everyone, today I'm here to do my, I think, fifth video in my Steps to Building a Home series. And don't mind my cat, this is Harley. I don't know if you can see him. Right, right there. That's Harley. Anyways, I wanted to mention a couple things before I get started. Um, you can probably notice I dyed my hair. I did a little bit more of a purple this time instead of like a burgundy. Um, you'll see it in a couple days hopefully of what it actually looks like because right now is not the greatest lighting but outside you'll be able to see it a little bit better but also I wanted to mention I think we finally completed drawings um, I know it probably seems like I've had them done for like ever but there's always little things that need to be fixed and approved and with the grading survey there's a lot more steps involved and finally 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 we I think got the engineer at the grading survey approval for what we designed for the grade of the land and then it just has to be sent to council and then we get it back and then we can submit for our permits yeah crazy so in order to do that though we actually bought or I actually bought a wide format printer so that I could print 13 by 19 sheets of paper and this is like incredible and I'm going to be using one of these to show you the next steps in our house and that is basically keeping the heat in your house and the cold outside um, or the cold in and the heat outside insulation so the next steps are obviously like I just said insulation and in Ontario we actually have to go by a code compliance form or chart there are so we are in zone one i believe or at least this is what this says and there are different packages that you can choose so we chose a2 which is basically what insulation r values you need in your ceiling your walls your basement your floors and something else holly don't chew my plant hey yeah, you. So this is what it looks like and we chose A2 and I'll kind of go through it with you what we require for our house and this is based on the type of furnace you're getting or the type of heat you're getting in general and then where you live and that type of thing. So I wanted to show you this drawing. This is our framing drawing for our west wall or our back wall. And there are a few things on here that um, depicts the insulation. And the first one is the, the attic R value. So along the top, you will see a yellow strip here. And this is the insulation in your attic. And for this package, you require R60 in the attic now. I believe it used to be R40. Correct me if I'm wrong, if any of you know, but I believe it used to be R40 and it changed as of last January. So now it's R60. So that's just a regular truss roof requires R60, which is what we have. But then right here is our cathedral ceiling. And in that, you only require R31. So these might sound like a, just a bunch of mumbo jumbo numbers, but basically the R value is the thickness of the insulation that you're going to be putting in that holds the heat either in or out. So then the next step is to insulate your walls. And you can see here, there is insulation along just this edge um, just to basically show it on the drawing and there you need at least R19 on the inside and then for our package we need at least R5 on the outside so actually it's very very hard to see on this drawing but the yellow depicts the R20 on the inside and then there's also the R5 which is the silver board the R5 silver board 1.1 inch insulation and that's actually a blue line it's very hard to tell on this drawing because it's so small even on this big drawing <laughs> but yeah so on the walls you need at least up to it's 
R24 basically in your walls. Now there's certain other requirements like if you have a walkout basement and you have an addition or a walkout on top of open space if that makes sense kind of like what we have here where we can walk out of the basement and then the dining room is up above outside basically that requires also i believe r31 in the floor there but because we don't have any exposed floors to the weather we don't require any of that and then the other thing is is your basement so now they require so they used to only require, I can't remember what it was, but next to nothing in the basement, I believe it was four feet below grade, you could have the basement insulation skirt um, wrap with vapor barrier and then you'd be good to go. But now they require you to insulate the entire basement of R20. So we actually decided to go with the ICF like I had mentioned in the previous steps. Um, I'll try and link it above but that actually has a huge R value compared to what we need. So our basement is going to be nice and cozy and it was just cheaper to do it that way. Or not cheaper, but you got more R value for your buck by going with ICF. Now in our garage, we do not require uh, it to be insulated unless we're heating it. And as of right now, we're not going to be heating it, so we don't have to insulate it. But the walls that do attach from the house to the garage, those all will be insulated. So that basically kind of just outlines what this chart means, um, the different types of R values that you need in your walls and your ceilings and that type of thing. And then obviously after that step, you have to vapor barrier, which is a plastic sheet basically that you put over top of your insulation and it just helps with the draft throughout the house. And then of course you need your drywall and your corner bead and that means taping and your compound and then your last steps would be sanding and painting and then you're pretty much to the inside interior of decorating that type of thing i will kind of go into detail uh what our interior finishes will be in a next video i said i was going to do it this video but i totally forgot that i had one more step to do um so yeah that's pretty much all for um, this step is mainly the insulation. It's a very, very important step, especially in Canada because we get to such low numbers in the winter and of course hot numbers in the summer. Um, you want to keep the inside cool and regulated. So obviously I mentioned in a previous video that your HVAC and your HRV are going to contribute to your heat and air circulation in your house as well. I'll have that linked above so that you can kind of watch that video if you haven't watched this one. But I hope that explains this last little detail technical step. But I did wanna mention that we are so close to getting permits. I know I probably say that every video, but we're literally coming down to like the next month or so of starting this house build. And I actually got a sunburn the other day and then it snowed today. So we still have to wait for the weather. And actually there's only half loads on the roads right now, which means because in Canada or some parts probably in the US do this too, the roads become so soft during the thaw of the spring and winter that they're only allowed to run half load trucks on the road. So they're not allowed to full fill full dump trucks or anything like that. So we actually have to wait for that and I believe that is May 15th. So we definitely won't be starting until after that date. Um, we still gotta get the trailer moved. We're still waiting on permits, which takes, I don't know how long, cause now we're into like real building season. Um, and then hydro is the first thing to go in. Um, that's actually already paid for and what can be done pretty much anytime now. So um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, and I guess we'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.